Hello folks, welcome to September 2018's Laosha Month and this is a tutorial for the Beginners Fun Challenge Group. Uh, this is a quick tutorial on acorns. The theme of our month is the forest floor and the challenge is three items, one of which needs to be a mushroom. You can choose other items that remind you of the forest floor if you'd like to. Uh, I'm going to do an acorn. Miss Val Cox is going to be doing uh, some lessons on texture and coloring of mushrooms and Laura Schubert is going to be doing a tutorial on making mushrooms. She's going to use boro because that's her thing but the techniques will translate over so definitely make sure you check those out. So to move things along what I've done is I've started a blank as I call it. This is just your basic round bead. I am using Lausha uh, medium transparent amber and for the top I'm going to be using uh, translucent chocolate kiss. Kind of a neat name. Anyways, this is how I make acorns. Start out with a round. Um, you know you can do it with gravity or I like to use graphite marbers. Get it nice and round whatever size you want. Um, then I use, I heat it up really good at one side, and I use my marver here. This is my favorite tool. When people ask me what tool on my bench is my favorite, it is always this torch marver. I can do so much with it. Um, there's lots of tools that you can use, um, hand marvers, shape marvers, they're all essential in a lot of ways, but I find this one is the one I use the most. It's just, it's handy, it's right here. It'll hold my brass presses, uh, allows me to do all kinds of shapes. I can do barrels, um, I can do bicones, all sorts of fun stuff with just a marber. So if you're looking for a versatile tool, that's a good one. Anyways, you can see what I'm doing. I am slowly bringing one side to a point. You can do it with a hand marber just as easily your hand marber and bring it down to a point. Um, any tool you want to use, just remember the basic shape and that you want a pucker at one end. One way to get a pucker, some people have asked about that, is heat your bead up really well so that the glass is moving nice and even, keep it moving, and then you can just kind of stand it up and watch it and wait for it and the glass will move down and voila, instant nice pucker. You can do that at either end. Acorns are round, they're not a barrel, so I like to try to give them that round shape. Now that I've got a pucker, I kind of want to straighten it out just a little bit at the bottom. So I just work it till I get almost an apple shape. There's a hint for you. I've got a nice pucker at this end, which I don't need because I'm going to cover it, and I've got the shape I want. So I'm going to kind of just round that back out now that I've got the point. There we go. And then I'm going to take it out and kind of let it smooth out and rest a little bit. Now, when you're using any of the fat rods, no matter what the manufacturer is, uh, if you get a big 10 millimeter or anything like that, any of the fat rods, you want to introduce them to the flame slowly. This one is bent because I had it sitting in my kiln for a little too long and it kind of, kind of got bent a bit. Um, so ignore that part, but any of the big rods, Lausha, Devardi, Ifetri, uh, Double Helix, any of them, introduce them slowly. But it has been my experience that once they get warm, they tend to get moving just like your thin rods, but you want to travel up them a little bit more slowly. If you travel the heat up the rod too fast, it, it's going to pop. Uh, you know, heat is not, or glass is not a good transfer of heat. So you want to work with it within its limitations. This is the Chocolate Kiss. This is one I love to use when I'm doing tree beads because it's just a nice, rich brown, very earthy. Um, and it seems to have slight variations in color in it that I find very attractive. And what you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just wrapping it around the top. I'm working at the glasses speed. Lausha holds its heat. It's so much fun, whoop, so much fun to work with. 
I'm kind of rushing it a little bit so it's kind of popping here. Um, if you're doing any kind of stretching or sculpture type work, oh, this stuff is just wonderful to work with. And this is one of the reasons I really want folks to step out of their Italian um, comfort zone for just a little while. Just experience something new. Um, it's my hope that we can do manufacturer months a couple times a year because there's a few other manufacturers I hope people will try. Everyone pretty much has tried a little bit of Sim, but the Ornella or Czech glass has some great colors. Um, we're going to dispel a few of the myths about compatibility. Um, we're going to go over some of the kiln schedules um, and how to get these glasses to play well with each other. Uh, really, a lot of it is about kiln time. Um, you can't rush the annealing on these glasses, but there are some simple um, schedules out there that you know, for people who are not kiln engineers like myself, that we can use in order to get our glasses to play along. Um, Marcy Davis, Fire Lady, is going to be going over a lot of that this month and talking about the history and basically just teaching us about Lausche glass. So I hope you all tune in for that. Also for the magic mushroom that, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that tutorial or if Laura is, we're going to do some magic mushroom work. I'm putting the rod back in the heater while I work on this next section so that it proceeds to heat up a little more. Okay, um, the magic mushroom thing, what I want to just mention is that Mary Lockwood has an awesome tutorial if you really want to get into some detail. All right, back to our acorn. My acorn is a little lopsided, so I'm going to help it out a bit. I'm going to kind of cheat and move that glass using my the side, the flat side of my tweezers and just pull it out and pull it out. See how long it stays fluid and how long I can work it? That's just one of the wonderful things about Lausha. It really is a great sculptural glass. And I'm going to kind of warm it up and give the base a little bit of insurance heat. Keeping in mind, <clears throat> excuse me, keeping in mind the uh, shape of an acorn, I kind of want to bring that lip down a little bit. But that tweezer technique is a technique that you can use when you're shaping your mushrooms too. Okay, so using my handy dandy marver here, I'm just going to bring it down kind of close. There we go. And I'm going to heat it up. Now, it has devitrified a little bit on me. I'm not going to worry about that. Not a big deal. We can fix that with either a different flame, you just warm it right back up and watch the glass and you will see, take it out to cool, and this is how you work EDP. Take it out, let it cool at its own pace and the devitrification will go away. See how it's done that? It's just, the devit is gone. That's how you work EDP. Just heat it up and let the glass rest. But we're not done with this. We need to put the texture on. For the sake of the tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use white. This is an effetry stringer, that's true. Um, I should have pulled out the cryolith white, but I forgot to do that. So anyways, what we're going to do now is add the texture on the top of the cap. So for that, I'm going to turn things down to where I'm comfortable working with stringer because stringer can be tough. Um, and obviously we want to place it and keep the glass underneath nice and warm. So heat up your tip, touch down. I apologize for the shakes. My hands always shake. I don't do a lot of stringer work for that. My stringer is getting too hot, so I'm going to move out of the flame. I start at the top and I work my way around. And there we go. If your base glass, the top of your uh, I want to say onion acorn is too hot the glass will melt in too quickly I try to put a single dot between each previous dot the idea there is kind of a what they call a Fibonacci scale which obviously I'm not achieving here so I'm just going to uh, rings and kind of just filling it in nobody is really going to be counting your dots except you so don't worry about it. 
You can see how badly my hands shake. So sorry. There we go. If you come to a dot that has, is too small, don't worry about it. Touch a little more glass on it and move on. And just keep doing your dots. There we go. Getting there. But you can see why I don't do a whole lot of stringer work. I need to get a creation station or some other form of wrist support um, and I just haven't gotten around to it. I mostly do a lot of just mandrel of beads and so on without stringer work. I love using the graphite marvers and the presses. There we go. Doing the last ring. My stringer is a little too hot. But the cool thing about stringers, they cool down quick, they heat up quick, they cool down quick. There we go. Now, I'm moving it out. The base has gotten cold and I want to keep that. I can see the translucency in the bead. So I want to kind of warm things back up slowly, gently. I don't want to crack my bead at this point because essentially it's done. And then I'm going to move to the top. Now, when you're heating in dots, give them some heat, let them settle. Give them a little bit of heat, let them settle. Because if you give them a whole bunch of heat until they get to where you want them and then you take them out of the flame, they're going to continue melting in, which is not your goal. You don't, you want them where you want them. You don't want them puckered all the way in. So just give them a chance. There we go. Now I'm going to give a little more oxygen because I want to try to remove that debitrification. There we go. No, I'm just, well, I'm pulling it off on part of it, but not all of it. So I'm going to get right in there between the bumps. Heat that glass right up. Let it cool. And there it goes. Alright, so there's your acorn. Kind of funky in the different colors, but when it cools down, it should be pretty with the clear amber color, which looks like this. You can see it's kind of hot from the warmer, but it's a nice transparent. And the chocolate, chocolate kiss, a nice color. And the white fetri dots. So there you go. I'm going to pop that in the kiln. Thank you for joining us.